the problem. It's our mindset. You know, I couldn't take it in the, uh, you know, in the late 1990s. Suddenly, you know, we became just another department. We are just like the postal service, perhaps education department. You know, we are no longer the prima donna of the government service. But we have to accept that because we, the country has to move on. Remember, we did the democratic control of the country is important. No country under military rule has prospered. Of course, there are countries under democratic rule that you know, became a failed state and all that. But generally, we say that no country under military rule has prospered. And, and therefore, I think we have to come to terms with reality. We have to accept our role no matter how painful it, was, uh, it is and no matter how much we have done to the nation. I think we have done our part and we should be proud of that. So I think this is Thank you. Thank element you. that we have to understand. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, Professor. I think those are very uh, thought-provoking thoughts uh, and uh, very useful coming from a soldier himself. Uh, any, uh, if there are no, any, any, any further questions? Uh, no, if uh, that is uh, not the case, um, uh, I, I uh, next. Uh, I think uh, before winding up, uh, I have been asked that uh, that I should give some summary remarks. But uh, uh, given the wide-ranging and deep-going uh, uh, nature uh, of the discussion, in a, in both thematic sense as well as in terms of a very educative and complex uh, national experiences uh, that were articulated here, trying to sum up is uh, to use naval parlance because I think the Vice Chancellor is a senior naval officer, to try to sum it up is trying to squeeze an aircraft carrier into a tugboat. So I will, uh, without sinking it, uh, so, so I will not <laughs> attempt that. But uh, nevertheless, uh, let me uh, highlight a few salient points that uh, I think the discussion shows that one size does not fit all. I think e every situation has peculiarities and uh, interagency cooperation was highlighted by almost everyone. Uh, of course, at the same time, emphasizing the importance of civilian oversight of the defense establishment then uh, the adaptability and responsiveness to changing uh, national, international, strategic, and geopolitical uh, scene was highlighted. Then, of course, everyone agreed that uh, it's a critically important subject, the civilian uh, military uh, integration, not only uh, important, uh, even indispensable. Uh, then uh, on the uh, on the thematic uh, presentations we had from Professor Ramutukala and also from uh, General uh, Leave, uh, it was uh, it brought into our discussion the thematic inputs as to how think tanks and technological aspects can be uh, brought into bear brought to bear on the national and regional efforts towards integration. And we had three national uh, perspective, national experience articulations. And uh, Madam Sialu highlighted uh, the strategic, technological, and economic considerations, as well as geopolitical uh, considerations underlying integration effort. And she also highlighted uh, the importance of non traditional security issues in this regard. And, uh, and she referred to a very innovative platforms for integration like corporate sector, uh, which is, I think, China has great experience. And Colonel Wahid, in his very interesting presentation, referred to the re re redefining the role of the, role of the uh, military into a more holistic uh, intelligence framework uh, that can ensure interoperability, as you put it, uh, which, is, uh, which is a very important uh, uh, aspect, touching on many, again, many non-traditional security issues. And Professor Ghazali uh, brought uh, in this very particular and important uh, Malaysian experience, how the military and civilian agencies were strategically uh, employed in the integration effort uh, during the 
uh, insurgent uh, threat time and also they are what he called the structural legacy of that uh, still uh, remaining how Malaysia made use of that to advance economically and as a society while of course keeping the, uh, the civilian democratic oversight over the military uh, and, uh, and including uh, uh, in consideration of this national blue ocean strategy of his country. So all in all it was a very enriching and educative uh, experience. I'm looking forward to the volume to be produced by the KDU. So thank you very much uh, for all your help, uh, a distinguished panel, as well as uh, the, the very active participants. Thank you very much. Uh, I think, Brigadier Tiller, you have some announcements to make? Thank you, sir. I believe that was a very interesting and invigorating session, and we will all walk away today with a lot of food for thought. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now present tokens of appreciation to our distinguished panel, and for which I would like to call upon our Deputy Vice Chancellor, Defense and Administration, Major General Ron Kulatunga. Sir, can we have you on stage? Senior Colonel Lee Shiaolu. <laughs> Colonel Wise Wahid. Professor, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Ahmad Ghazali bin Abu Hassan. <laughs> Professor Dev Ranmutugala. Last but not least, a token of appreciation for our session chair, Mr. Palihakkara. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, with that we conclude the second defense plenary session for the ninth International Research Conference of the Kotalawala Defense University.